students we will read today Drake's poem the lamb now the lamb belongs to the group of poems songs of innocence <clears throat> and let us see how Drake's concept of innocence is worked out through this particular poem little lamb who made thee dost thou know who made thee now mark the word thee mark the word thou thee means you thou also means you you these are these were very much used in the bible dost this means do so it comes to mean little lamb who made you who is your creator and this is repeated in the second line the repetition why the why repetition when we repeat we repeat something when we want to draw special attention <clears throat> so here the poet wants to draw our special attention that is why there is repetition little lamb who made thee dost thou know who made thee o little lamb do you know who created you do you know who created you so who is your creator this is the focal point <clears throat> this spirit is this uh, this uh, um, uh, this strain rather to say is continued in the third line give the life and with the feet do you know your creator who has created you who who gave you life and who gave you food by the stream and over the meat now stream means water meat means meadow that is land so whether you are near whether you are near water or land your food is assured softest clothing woolly bright gave the sorry gave the clothing of the delight your creator has offered you a cloth that is your skin he created you in such a way that he would your body would stand all natural inclements gave the clothing of delight softest clothing woolly and bright mark the word delight god didn't create the lamb mechanically he assured his creature his creation food and clothing and such a clothing that would make its survival in the world delightful so the word delight is very important <clears throat> gave the such a tender voice making all the whales rejoice Do you, your creator has provided you a very soft voice and as it were it is music it has a music of its own and that music covers the entire veil that is the entire valley <clears throat> now mark the word rejoice rejoice means feeling joy now earlier we came across another uh, word delight so delight rejoice they all point to joy yes and this is important parallel uh, uh, sorry 
this is important because God's creation is, as Tagore says, is one of anandam. <coughs> Jagoter anandu jogge, as Tagore says. Anandu dhara bohiche bhugane. So Blake is a mystic. Tagore is also a mystic poet. And in this point, there is a co-sharing note and it is this that God's world is one of joy, unalloyed joy and his, he uh, makes this creature in order to contribute to this tone of joy which is pervading the entire world. So, let me repeat the poem, Little Lamb, who made thee? Dost thou know who made thee? Gave thee life and beat thee feet, by the stream and over the mead. Gave thee clothing of delight, softest clothing, woolly bright. Gave thee such a tender voice, making all the veils rejoice. Little Lamb, who made thee? Dost thou know who made thee? So there is again repetition. The child's, this repetition is indicative or speaks of the child's uh, um, uh, curiosity to know as to who is the creator of the lamb. <clears throat> Little lamb, I will tell thee. Little lamb, I will tell thee. Little lamb, I will tell thee. Now you know that if I say I shall go, it means I may go. But if I say I will go, it means I must go. So here, there is a usage of I will. It means that it means that the speaker will definitely uh, tell. The, def the, 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 uh, the speaker has a definite answer to convey and that is why I will tell thee, I will tell thee. That is, I know who is your creator, I know who is your creator and I will tell about him. He is called by thy name for he calls himself a lamb. So here there is, a, uh, there is an affinity established between the lamb and the and God, between the creator and creation. <clears throat> he is meek and he is mild. What is the point of similarity between uh, the creator and the creation? The point of similarity between the creator and the creation is, big, is certain values, is certain features, is certain values rather to say. What are they? Meekness and mildness. <clears throat> he became a little child. Further, the child speaker establishes a, an affinity <coughs> between himself and the lamb. He became a little child. He became <coughs> I. A, he became a little child. So, it, child, childhood, uh, a, a, a childhood stage is marked by innocence. In the Bible, child is, uh, the, the, the childlike simplicity is very much highlighted. Not only in the Bible, throughout the world, the childlike innocence is highlighted as a very positive value. <clears throat> For he calls himself, yes, he is meek, uh, yes, he is called by thy name, for he calls himself a lamb. He is meek and he is mild. He is mild. So first, the affinity between the lamb and the child, uh, uh, and the lamb and uh, God is established. Then, between the child and the lamb, 
he became a little child so there is the, so the child the lamb and god they are put together into same bracket and that is reinforced in this line i comma a child and thou a lamb we are called by his name so i means the uh, child speaker lamb means the animal and we <coughs> that is lamb and the child are called by his name that is i you and he that is the child the lamb and god are grouped together on the basis of certain points of affinity and what are they meekness mightiness softness purity innocence these are the values of innocence that is why innocence according to blake is the fragile stage when there are guardian figures a child cannot walk alone a child may lose his path a child may drop on the ground and naturally there must be a supportive person beside him to protect the child okay so <clears throat> uh, so uh, that is why the stage of innocence is a very delicate stage yes the child the lamb god yes the child and the lamb they co-share certain features softness meekness yes purity these are the features which uh, through which they works out his uh, concept of innocence as a as a stage of as a stage as a very delicate stage as a very fragile stage <clears throat> little lamb god bless thee little lamb god bless thee so this is now established who is the creator of the lamb and it is also established the point of affinity between the lamb the child and god and this leads the poet to a conclusion that god's blessings is will always be with the lamb little lamb god bless thee little lamb god bless thee here also there is repetition and this repetition is suggestive uh, is not accidental it is intentional the intention is to communicate the blessings of god right now <clears throat> let me read the poem again little lamb who made thee dost thou know who made thee gave thee life and with thee feet by the stream and over the mead gave thee clothing of delight softest clothing woolly bright gave thee such a tender voice making all the hills rejoice second part little lamb who made thee dost thou know who made thee he is called by thy name for he calls himself a lamb he is meek and he is mild he became a little child i a child and thou a lamb we are called by his name little lamb god bless thee little lamb god bless thee now in this poem the, uh, the characteristic feature is the inter is the punctuation mark now punctuation mark is very important in any poetry because a poet speaks through punctuation marks it is through his use of punctuation mark that we can evaluate that we can interpret the poet's intention you read done 
<coughs> in your first uh, same uh, i think or you will read it so uh, you, you you have read uh, done and you will find that in dance poem uh, let me recall one line for god sake hold your tongue and let me love so there is no uh, so here the Mm, uh, poem is set in such a way there is no uh, there is no uh, punctuation used and you need to <coughs> you, you you need to articulate in this way for god sake hold your tongue and let me laugh so it is this it is through this tone that the poet communicates his intention yes so this is uh, here also in the lamp Yes, in the first part there are so many. There is uh, there are three types of punctuation used here: interrogation, no interrogation, and exclamation. In the first part there are interrogations. In the second part there is no interrogation, but there are other uh, punctuation marks like colon, comma. etc and also a stop we are called by his name so here there is no interrogation mark and the poet poem ends at the end of the poem we find exclamation so these are the three types of punctuation which are which have been used here interrogation non interrogation and exclamation why there must be some kind of poetic intention as i told you that a poet speaks through uh, punctuation marks in the first part there is there are interrogations because these interrogations are indicate are indicative of the questioning mind of the child speaker but even though there are so many questions in the first part the second there is a definite answer and that is why in the second part there is no interrogation mark there is there is non interrogation marks and the poem ends with exclamation now exclamation is suggestive of awe and it is this sense of uh, 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 exclamation is actually um, uh, actually it does communicate Uh, a, a kind of emotion which may be which is uh, um, uh, which is emotional and here the emotion is that of awe at god's grandeur so let me uh, sum up this point the poet speaks through interrogation uh, through punctuation mark number 1 number 2 they here use three types of punctuation mark note of interrogation non interrogation and exclamation number 3 this makes clear the poet's intention the <clears throat> number 4 the intention is this that they wants to say that at this stage of innocence so many questions may be raised but innocence is a delicate stage and that is because it is a delicate stage marked by certain values like meekness tenderness softness that is why <coughs> there is definite answer possible and that is why in the second part there is no interrogation mark i in course of my talk i also pointed out or we also explored a point that is affinity between tagore and blake now tagore is a mystic poet and blake also is a mystic poet let me quote one line of tagore which is suggest which is indicative of his mystic temperament rater pakhi gai ekaki shongi bihin anthokare bare bare ami kan pete roi so this is actually a mystic trait and tagore 
uh, assimilates or integrates within himself the romantic temperament of the West and the romantic temperament of the East and makes his own poetic language. Yes. So, in this poem and one uh, uh, sharing, co-sharing features between the Western Romantics and Tagore is this, that is this, the faith in Anandam. The concept of Anandam comes again and again in Tagore's songs. Ananda dhara bodhiche bhuvane. This is a very frequent, yeah, they, this is a very well-known line of Tagore. That is, uh, it is actually, uh, uh, it is actually uh, um, uh, uh, with this poetic uh, language, Tagore and the Romantics celebrate the creation of God. God's creation is one of anandam, is one of delight, which is unalloyed. And the use of these words like delight, rejoice, as we noted earlier, are indicative of the poetic mind of William Dake. That is a mystic temperament. And it is this mystic temperament that establishes affinity between Tagore and uh, Dake. Or put, to put it otherwise, it, uh, through this poem, through a particular poem, we can uh, explore the like-mindedness of the poets across the across cultures. And it is with this strength we should approach a poem. And it is this strength which Tagore uh, highlights in as Bisho, in his famous essay, Bisho Sahitto. There, Tagore wants to maintain that throughout the world, there is the poets are uh, are developing their themes on certain basic emotion. Okay, I think uh, I have been able to uh, read. To, uh, we have been able to read the poem. Yes, another point: the use of biblical words like the, die, etc. These are biblical words because uh, these are frequently used in the Bible. Yes, then what is the purpose? The purpose is this, that these words lend a, a mood of uh, awe, a serene mood rather to say, lend a serene mood to this particular poem. Yes, and you know that serene mood, blessed mood, these words are also used by Wordsworth in his poem Tintern Abbey because it is the romantic temper. As I pointed out that this romantic temper <coughs> uh, is a uh, point which brings Tagore uh, uh, very closer to the Western Romantics, or rather to say, the Romantics across the world, they share this temper, the, the, the celebration of the mood, serene and blessed. Thank you.